Securities Office President Counter for you, Your Honor. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, we're back on the record on case CR 22211623, State of Idaho versus Chad Guy Daybell. We just concluded the lunch recess. At this time, the state completed its closing argument. It's now time for the defense to make its closing argument. Mr. Pryor, is the defense ready? Yes, you may. Okay, we'll enact that. You can use the wireless microphone as well. Folks hear me? Okay, thank you. I promise you, um, got about 15 slides. Not going to be long. I want to touch on a few points. And then I want to spend a little bit of time talking to you folks a little bit about the case. Okay. I promise you this isn't going to take two hours. It'll be briefer, but there are some points uh, that I need to touch on. And then I would respectfully ask for your attention in regards to that. I want to start out with the first slide. And, and the reason I did this is because in order for there to be a, a conviction, it's a chain of links that the prosecutor attorney has to go through. Uh, Chad Daybell, the first link is that he's presumed innocent. He's presumed innocent now. He was presumed innocent during the trial. He's presumed innocent throughout the trial. When it goes back to the jury and you consider the evidence, that's when you make the decision. And that's how that works. Throughout the trial, from the very beginning to the middle to the end to today, the entire burden has been on the state, okay? And the definition of, of what has to be proven by the state is beyond a reasonable doubt. The state must prove every element beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, you're, you've heard some information previously from the other attorney about what the state has to prove. One of the things the state has to prove in regards to the conspiracy charges is that there was an agreement, okay? And if you recall when we were going through the voir dire process, that fancy French word that talks about when we were trying to select the jury, I talked to you and asked a number of you what an agreement is. What do you believe an agreement is, okay? But the state has to prove that Chad Daybell, Lori Vallow, or with Alex Cox, or with other co-conspirators that they haven't named, with one of them entered into some sort of an agreement to kill the children and to kill Tammy Daybell. And then you have to show the Chad's involvement in that. That's the next thing the state has to show. Then they have to show that there was evidence of the murder. Jury instruction number three talks about, again, what I just talked about. The defendant, Chad Guy Dable, has been charged in the amended indictment with certain counts of conspiracy with Lori Vallow and or Alex Cox, who's deceased, and or other conspirators, both known and unknown. And then it goes on, and I'll talk this a little bit about. The crime of conspiracy involves an agreement by two or more persons to commit a crime. Okay, it can't be an agreement that we have consistent religious beliefs. It can't be an agreement that we talk about religion without unless there's an extra step. And that extra step has to be, we are going to kill these children. We are going to agree to kill Tammy Daybell. You can hear all the testimony in the world about dark spirits. You can hear all the testimony in the world about light and dark. You can hear all the testimony in the world about death percentages. And if you remember when we talked about death percentages with Officer K, who I think is here today, one of the text messages or the messages that he put up that he pulled off when he did his Google search is about Tammy and Chad talking about death percentages. 
talking about light and dark. You heard from Emma Murray how Emma Murray talks to her father. Now, they used a different term, but in Chad's traditional religion, his traditional LDS faith, it was not uncommon to talk about light and dark. It was not uncommon because we showed you the message between Tammy and Mark and Chad where they talked about death percentages. Okay? Now, the state brings up, yes, oh, Chad, Chad put a death percentage on Tylee and JJ and Tammy and they're all dead. But you also heard testimony from one of the state's experts that said, we don't know if it was a high number or a low number and there's confusion as to what that means. And I'd like to go back to the discussion that we had with one of the FBI agents who mentioned that there were thousands and thousands of messages, an enormous amount of, of evidence here. You heard from my expert, Patrick Eller. He talked about, I think the Library of Congress holds one terabyte of evidence if we went paper to paper through the whole building. And we had six terabytes, six bounds of paper that would fit in six libraries of Congress. And what has happened is you've been shown a handful of text messages that talk about a plan, that talk about death percentages, that talk about light and dark, talk about a variety of subjects. But what you didn't hear is you didn't hear about the thousands and thousands of messages that talked about religious beliefs, talked about a variety of other topics. And if we look at each and every one of ours position, you can always find a text message or a, a message of some kind that may be slanted or turned in a way to benefit one position or another. And that's not particularly uncommon. How often is that you send out a text message to somebody and it's misconstrued? How often is it that you send an electronic message to somebody through an email and it's misunderstood? Or maybe it's looked at in a different way. You know, as a society, we've lost our ability to communicate. Doing what I'm doing today is a, is a lost art. Uh, lawyers have to do this, especially in our position. But many of people who are in jobs, what it's done is send me a quick email, send me a text message, tell me what you feel. And sometimes those messages can be construed. The prosecuting attorney talked about, oh, there was a plan. And, and insinuating to you, suggesting to you that this plan was to kill the children. And at no time did the prosecuting attorney show you a text message that said, let's kill the kids, let's kill Tammy, okay? Instead, they talked about a plan. This is what we're looking to do in the future, okay? That's what they said to you. And they're trying to insinuate or suggest to you that in some way that means, well, that, that means that we're going to kill the kids. No, the plan was, and whether you believe with Chad's religious beliefs or not, whether you accept his religious beliefs, 144,000, that's his beliefs. He was a gatherer. He was a gatherer of the 144,000, and he said, I want to gather people, the sick, the elderly, the children, the impoverished, those that can't handle for themselves and those that may be able to go on and, 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 and become a part and parcel as this gatherer that he suggests would put together the 144,000 in Rexburg. Now, whether you think that's crazy or not, it doesn't matter. Whether you agree with light and dark, it doesn't matter. Whether you agree with death percentages, it doesn't matter. He's entitled to his beliefs. Every one of us has beliefs. Every one of us believes, has a certain core set of beliefs that we believe in. And think about, are they all rational? Maybe not. Maybe not. Everybody has pursuits that they want to pursue and, and things they want to uh, do in their, their um, future. You know, I, I wanted to be a professional fisherman. Not really good at fishing. Wasn't going to work out. Wasn't going to make a lot of money. But it can still be a dream. I always wanted a 30-inch waist. That's not happening, folks. It's just not going to happen. 
I'm too old and maybe not as motivated as I should be. But we all have dreams. Now, how do we know these are dreams that Chad talks about? Because for 15 years, he was writing books. He was writing books about things that he was passionate about. And if you know anything about authors, when they're passionate about something, anybody comes up to them and brings up a subject and says, let's talk about religion. You've opened the floodgates. And it's very easy for you to go out there and say, I want to talk about my religion. I want to tell you all about all of these things. And at some point, when you start writing books and you go to these preparing the people conferences and you meet all of these people and you feel like, well, maybe I've become a little bit of a celebrity. Okay. In this case, I don't want to become a celebrity. I've, I've had enough now at this point. But, you know, Chad writes books. And he goes to these conferences and he talks about all of these religious beliefs. He talks about his premonitions. He talks about things that he thinks he can predict. Do you believe him? You don't have to. You don't have to believe anything he stands for. Nobody does. But he has a right to talk about it. And he has a right to say what he wants to say. And that's one of the distinctions, folks. Requires involves an agreement. It requires